5, Deuteronomy chapter number 5, verse number 16, and we're also going to Ephesians chapter number 6, starting at verse number 2. Yes, two passages of passages of scripture, one Old Testament, one New Testament, uh, Deuteronomy chapter number five, starting at verse number 16, and Ephesians chapter number six, starting at verse number two. Hallelujah. If you didn't bring your Bible, we have it on the screen for you. Amen. And we're going to rock and roll on today. Hallelujah. When you have it, say, I have it. If you're still looking and your Android user say, wait on me, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. You know, I love y'all. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Deuteronomy chapter number 5, verse number 16. Help us preach your word, God, in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy chapter number 5, verse number 16. It says, Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you, that your days may be long and that it may be well with you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. That's powerful. That your days may be long and that it may be well with you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Ephesians chapter number six, starting at verse number two, going to verse number three, it says, honor your father and your mother. He's literally quoting what what, what I just gave you in Deuteronomy chapter number five. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise. And the promise is that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Just tag three people and just tell them she's still your mama. (laughs) <laughs> you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. She's still, she's still your mama. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Lord, I pray, oh God, Lord, that even as I preach your word, that you would invade hearts in the name of Jesus Christ and that you would strengthen where strength is needed. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Overcomers, for a few weeks, we have been postured and positioned in the midst of a series of messages that we have tagged honor roll. The series has been opening our eyes to the role that honor plays in the life of a believer. We've discovered throughout our journey here that honor is a discipline and a principle that opens doors, opens hearts, uh, and releases the power and the favor of God in our lives. Conversely, dishonor closes doors and closes hearts and limits how much God can trust you and bless you. Honor is a door opener. Honor is a heart opener. Honor precedes favor. Are you listening? Throughout this pericope of scripture known as your Bible, God repeatedly instructs us to show people honor. Meaning, we should strive to be people who, present, who represent our God by showing value and esteem to those we come in contact with. We strive to show honor to people by esteeming them as valuable, esteeming them as precious, esteeming them as weighty, or esteeming them as worthy, or re, uh, worthy of respect and investment. Honor, ladies and gentlemen, is not the thing we reserve for those who are special. It is not the thing that we reserve for those who are famous, notorious, or highly regarded, but it flows abundantly out of our relationship with God. Honor should become a part of our DNA, which is why we're spending so much time talking about it, because we need it to be a part of the culture of this church. We need it to be a part of our DNA as believers. Somebody shout honor. Honor Honor God. Honor your spouse. Honor leadership honor people in general. But then today's text deals with, write this down, parental honor. Parental honor. It says, honor your mother and your father. Yeah. Uh, That your days may be long and that it may be well with you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Oh, God, God is suggesting in the passage in Deuteronomy because he gives them commandments before he releases them into their promise. You do know that when he gives them the commandments, uh, you know them as the Ten Commandments, but there's actually many more other than the Ten Commandments. Uh, They 
postured and positioned between their place of bondage in Egypt and their place of promise in the promised land. And he gives them instructions just before he releases them into their promise, just before he releases them into the thing that he said he was going to give to them. He says, hold up, wait a minute. I want to make sure that you understand what pleases me and what honors me. And one of those things is that you honor your mother and your father. Can I suggest to you that it's possible that the reason why you haven't walked into your promise is because of dishonor? May, may I suggest to you that the reason why you're stuck in, a, in, in between, that'll preach, the reason why you're stuck in between, in between, you're not where you were, but you're not where you believe you should be, you're stuck in between is because of dishonor. And so because God loves all of us, right? Can you agree with that? God loves all of us. He's not going to allow you to dishonor me and still say you honor him. Oh, that's, good. that's so rich. Uh, even for a stranger, because I don't want you to think it's just about honoring leaders, even for the person next to you who may not have a title, may not have alphabets uh, after their name, God loves them. Amen. Can you agree with that? God loves them even if you don't love them. Hello, God loves them. And God is saying, I love them so much that I'm commanding you to honor them. And in honoring them, you honor me. Yeah. Hello. Now, some people, they, oh God, your problem is not that you don't love God. Your problem is that you don't love nobody else. Y'all mad. We throw in haymakers this morning. Yeah, that, that, that's the problem. And so he goes on to say in Ephesians chapter number six, he says, honor your mother and your father. And Brianna, what I discovered is that at least seven additional times other than these two passages of scripture, he says the exact same thing. And I've discovered that whenever God repeats something, he wants you to really get it. So he says it over and over again. So a total of nine times, he says, honor your mother and your father so that it would be well with you. And it must mean, since he keeps repeating the same thing over and over again, it must mean that he meant what he said and he said what he meant. And so Mother's Day in, in the United States is a national holiday we celebrate every second Sunday in May. The holiday was established in 1907 by Anna Jarvis from Philadelphia, who started a campaign to honor mothers. And two years after her own, and she did it two years after her own mother died. So in 1910, West Virginia became the first state to recognize Mother's Day. Then a year later, uh, just about every other state had caught on. And in 1914, President Woodrow Wilson officially made it a national holiday. And since that time, billions and billions of mothers and mother figures have been honored. And we continue to do so to this very day. Now, ladies and gentlemen, from a pastoral perspective, I, if I've learned anything about Mother's Day and Father's Day over the years, it is not to assume that they are happy days for every. In fact, I'm discovering more and more that most people did not grow up in a home with a healthy, safe, for real, God fearing woman who raised them in the Lord. And if that's you, you face quite a conundrum when it comes to parental honor, because if your mother was like Claire Huxtable. Honor would be easy. If your mother was like Florida Evans, honor would be easy. If your mother was like Carol Brady, honor would be easy. If your mother was like Harriet Winslow, anybody remember? Honor would be easy. If your mother was like Rochelle Rock, <laughs> mother, <laughs> honor would be easy. And at the very least, if your mother was like Marge Simpson, <laughs> honor would be easy. But no, your mother is. Instead, your mother is. <laughs> or your mother is. Or your mother is. Or your mother is. So the conundrum that you have is, Pastor, I know what the word says and salute to the word. And Pastor, I know you're right. But how do I honor a mother 
who was not the ideal mother? How do I, mother, how do I honor a mother who is not the model mother? And so many of us were in the unenviable position, yet real position of trying to heal from the trauma we received from from a mother who was broken at best or toxic at worst. And so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Adonis, I'm trying to figure out what's worse, the dad who was out of sight and thus out of mind or the mother that was present but was so toxic that one spends the rest of their lives trying to heal from the internal wounds. I would suggest to you that both are toxic. Breathe in, breathe out. It's going to be all right. And so in a very real sense, we are all a product of our environment, which includes who raised us. The way a mother handled or failed to handle your needs as a child has shaped your worldview, shaped your relationships, shaped your marriage, shaped your career. Shaped your, uh, 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 has shaped your self-image and shaped your life in general. And there are several types of mothers. Uh-huh. Let's ride. What about the phantom mother? The phantom mother. This is the mother who was there but not there. Whether it was because of her own trauma or her own struggles or her own brokenness, she was detached physically and emotionally and struggled with communicating and being fully present. You can't remember, really, if somebody put a gun to your head and forced you to remember, you have difficulty remembering a time when she hugged you. You have difficulty trying to recall a time when she said, I loved you. She made sure you had food. Yes, she did. She made sure you had clothes, but she neglected your emotional needs. She was a phantom. She was a mirage. What about the controlling mother? This woman ran everything. I mean, ran everything and didn't give anyone the room or the space to think, to breathe. To make your own choices. She was so controlling that that you spent significant seasons of your life counting down the time until you could get out of her house. Often going to the other extreme because you said when I have kids, I'm going to be nothing like her. So you go to the other extreme of hurting yourself unnecessarily because when you got out of the house, you went buck wild. Yeah, because nobody's going to tell me what to do. Nobody's going to control my decisions. So I'm going to show you how much I'm running my own life, even if it's to my own detriment. What about the trophy mom? The trophy mom. This is this is the mom who will go all the way off to make sure her kids win. This is the trophy mom, the mom who is at the basketball game or the football game, ready to beat the crap out of a referee ready to jack up a coach, ready to go all the way on the gym floor and beat up the cheerleading coach. Are you listening to me? (laughs) In fact, she often goes too far because her goal is not so much her kid's happiness as much it is uh, her desire to live vicariously through her kids. So she pushes so hard, not necessarily to support her kids, but she pushes so hard because she feels like a failure for her kids is her own personal failure. So she couldn't be the cheerleading captain. So now she pushes her daughter to be that. Uh Yeah, she couldn't achieve well when she was in school. So now she pushes them to achieve school, uh, achieve well, almost to the detriment and the demise of her own kids. So now her kids dreams are co-opted by her own dreams because she is the trophy mom. This is also the mother that had such high demands and such high standards and opinions and criticisms that she made made you feel like you couldn't do anything right. Let her tell it you couldn't even breathe right. Let her tell it you couldn't eat right. Quit smacking your food. Yeah. And so you walked around the house on eggshells because you had a deep fear of disappointing your trophy mother. You don't have to say, man, I can't prepare for it to be quiet. Yeah, yeah. But what about the codependent mother? Mm. Mm. The codependent mother is like American Express. You can't leave home without her. 
And no matter what you do, she's always attached to you. So now <laughs> you can't go out on a date without her showing up. You can't go on a vacation with your own family without her showing up. She's, she's always tied to you at the hip. She's codependent. And if you say you want space, she makes you feel bad for wanting space. And if you say you need time, she makes you feel bad for wanting time. Are you listening? And so she guilts you and she, mo and she manipulates you into doing what she wants to do. Because she's the codependent mother. You can't have your own business because she in it. Y'all all right? <laughs> and so she doesn't understand that the one thing you need is space. And sometimes that requires her to stay at home. Mm -hmm. Y'all didn't like that one. What about the mental mother? <laughs> the mental mother. This is the mother who had mental challenges some of which were so severe that, that she sometimes had to be sent away from you to get help. Yeah. And your family loved you so much that they didn't tell you everything that mom was tripping on at the time. But the older you get, the more you discover or the more you learn that mama has some issues and mama has some struggles. But unfortunately, you grew up in a paradigm and in a family context where what was happening in the house stayed in the house. Yes. Yes. So mom, who clearly needed help, couldn't get help Jesus. because it would be an affront or an embarrassment to the family. Are you here? What about the mistress mama? The mistress mama who happened to get with a man who was already married, already engaged or already otherwise entangled. And so you constantly found yourself on the short end of the, of the stick because mother made some choices that affected you. Yeah. And so you often felt rejected or you often felt unwanted. Or mom created narratives to justify her actions. Yeah. She knew dude was married, but she created a whole story so that she wouldn't be the enemy or the villain in the story. You got it? Yeah. And so, and so she was the mistress mother. Oh, but I got to pause the tape because here's my first preaching point so you can get happy. Here it is. Before God formed you in the belly, he knew you yes. and ordained you. Yes. And just because you may have been a mistake to your mama or a mistake to your daddy does not make you a mistake to your God. Y'all ain't ready to talk to me. I've come to tell you that even though you were not expected by them, God surely expected you and had a plan and a purpose for your life. Tell somebody right quick, I'm here on purpose. I'm here on purpose. I don't care what your family mess looks like. You're here on purpose. I don't care what your mama said about your daddy. You're here on purpose. Yeah. What about the messed up mama? The messed up mama. This is the mama who couldn't give you what you needed or deserved because of drugs, because of alcohol or because of some other kind of vice. Uh, and, and, and oh God, the vice wouldn't let her be a full time mama. You got it. And, and you often felt unloved because you felt like she chose everything but you. She chose the alcohol over you. She chose crack over you. She chose the man over you. She chose everything over you. But the truth is, she was messed up. And messed up people do messed up things. And her condition, whew, this is where you ought to have some relief, because her condition had to do more with her than it had to do with you. And can I suggest to you that sometimes people have problems and sometimes people have issues that have absolutely nothing to do with you. So I'm releasing you this morning. I'm setting captives free this morning because you've been blaming yourself because you've been saying maybe if I didn't stress her out so much and maybe if I didn't demand so much and maybe if I didn't ask so much, you were a kid and you needed a mother. But mom was not in a position to be the kind of mother that she needed to be. She was messed up. I'm almost done. What about the missing mama? Whether she was missing because of death or whether she was missing because she chose to be missing, the missing mother leaves a hole 
in the hearts of those who need her. She wasn't there, and for some it seemed like she didn't care that she was there. But even, here's the scripture, but even if my mother and my father abandoned me, the Lord will hold me close. Glory. The Lord will make sure that I'm provided with the, per- the people who can support me in their absence. The Lord will hold me close. And that's my prayer for you this morning is that the Lord would hold you close. Some of you don't recognize that verse because you're used to it in the King James Version where it says that the Lord will take me up. But the Lord taking me up is literally the Lord bringing me up close to his face. <laughs> He's bringing me up close to him so that I can feel his presence, so that I can feel his assurance, so that I can feel his joy, so that I can feel his peace. Glory to his name. Somebody lift up your hands and say, Lord, hold me close. Hold me close. And somebody finds yourself going through a season right now that's kind of rough, that's kind of tough. But I've come to tell you that the Lord will hold you close. I'm praying for everybody who's felt abandoned and everybody who's felt rejected and everybody who's felt dropped and everybody who felt manipulated. I'm praying that late in the midnight hour that God would hold you close and that when other people don't have time to take your call and other people don't have time to text you back, that the Lord will hold you close. You want to know, Maria, why I haven't fell out yet is because the Lord is holding me close. The reason why I haven't given up is because the Lord is holding me close. The only reason why I have a piece of confidence right now is because the Lord is holding me close. What about the messy mama? The the messy mama. You, You found yourself constantly having to clean up what she messed up. Mm -hmm. You constantly found yourself having to defend her because people would say things about your mama and deep down you knew they were true. But nobody better not talk about your mama, no matter how messed up she is. Y'all ain't ready to have church today. And so you found yourself constantly defending the indefensible. You constantly found yourself trying to take up for her. And at some point, you just got tired. Tired of trying to cover up her lies. Tired of trying to cover up all the innuendo and all the rumors. Just tired. In some ways, watch this. You felt like you were raising her instead of her raising you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So here you are, 12 years old, but you feel like you're 32. Because you're constantly in the position of having to be the strong one. Because mama's too messy to be the strong one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it, it's rough. It's rough. It's rough. But no matter which type of mother you know or had, she still... Your mama. Yeah, right. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. She's still your mama, and, and the text instructs us to honor her. Yeah. Because, Christian, there is no condition in the text. The text doesn't say honor your faithful mother, or your diligent mo- mother, or your committed mother, or your present mother, or your balanced mother, or your uh, 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 a rich mother, or, or your peaceful mother, or your get along mother. Uh, it doesn't say any of that. It just simply says honor your mother and your father. So here's the question. Here's the question, Trayvon. How do I honor a mother? who wasn't the best mother? How do I honor a mother who wasn't the model mother? How do I honor a messy mother? How do I honor a phantom mother? How do I honor a mental mother? How do I honor a missing mother? I'm glad you asked. Write this down. I don't have screens for it. Here it is. Number one, obey the word and not your feelings. Obey the word and not your feelings. If you grew up with any of these mothers, you feel some type of way, and you should. But your feelings are not God. So you have to be able to obey God and not your feelings. Just because your mother was wrong or is wrong don't mean you have a right to be wrong. Let me repeat that. 
Just because your mother was wrong or is wrong does not mean that you have a right to be wrong. Put it this way. Granny said it this way. She said two wrongs don't make a right. Even though you might feel justified in your flesh, two wrongs don't make a right. You've got to decide to obey God, even though you may prefer to be in your feelings. Yeah. Does that make sense? All right. Here's the second one. Appreciate the good things. Appreciate the good things. Let's go deep right quick. What you need to understand is that your mother, like you, is a walking paradox. Everybody, everybody in here is a walking, talking paradox. What's a paradox? Everybody in here is a walking contradiction. Are you listening to me? Everybody in this room has good points and bad points. Child, she messy, but girl know how to fry some chicken. (laughs) She can't keep a man, but she's a loyal friend. Are you here? She had 60 husbands and a thingamajig, but... But she was a good mother. Everybody in the room, I wonder what people would say about your butt. I wonder what your butt is. See, see, you kind of biased, so you won't admit what your what your butt is. But I wonder if I gave your kids the microphone, what would they say your butt is? What what would they say? The house is clean, but. She was at the football game, but, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. But, 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 what is your but? All I'm trying to tell you is just like you, your mother was a walking paradox. Your mother was a, con- a walking contradiction. And in order to keep your own self sane, in order to have peace in your own heart, you would do well to appreciate the good instead of focusing on all the bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Find the good. Find the good part. That, that, oh, God, if I had it to do over a Christian and I had to write my whole message all over again, I would say, find the good part. That's the point. Find the good part. Find the good part. Find the good part. Find the good part. Uh, move all of the negative out of the way and find the good part. That would help your marriage if you would learn to find the good part. That would help you with your kids if you would learn to find the good part. That would help you with your job if you would learn to find the good part. That would help you with your ministry if you would learn how to find the good part. But what the enemy has done is he has co-opted your mind to make you focus on the latest thing. And often the latest thing is the worst thing or the most negative thing. And that's why you're stressed out. And that's why you're depressed. And that's why you can't find joy. Hallelujah. Oh, I got Bible for you. He said, Uh, I'm paraphrasing whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are kind whatever things are of a good report think on these things because ultimately your life follows what you think whatever you train your mind to focus on that's what manifests in your life so learn how to appreciate the good things yeah yeah every now and then I fall out laughing at my mama over the good things Every now and then I find myself in the kitchen and I find myself doing what she did in the kitchen because that's the good thing. Every now and then I look at my kid, my own kids, because in some ways I felt like my mom was a better grandmother than she was a mother. But that's the good thing. Are you listening? And so I choose to focus on the good thing and I choose to honor her for the good thing. Well, what if she was missing, Pastor? The fact that she conceived you and gave birth to you is the good thing. Ah, it's a good thing. Because if she hadn't have did that, you couldn't sit in this room right now. And so that is the good thing. Here's the next one. Are you ready? Extend mercy. So since you're focusing on the good thing, you can now extend mercy towards the negative or the bad thing. Extend mercy. But in order to extend mercy means that you have to first consider yourself. Mercy is when you withhold just punishment, meaning they, they deserve to be cussed all the way out. They deserve to be told. They deserve whatever punishment comes their way. Yet, 
you extend mercy. Here's here's the last phrase in, 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 in this point. Give the mercy you need. Give the mercy you need. I wonder if anybody's bold enough in the room to admit, I need mercy. I need mercy. I need mercy. I need mercy. And here, here's the trip, Miss LaCherie. Here's the trip, Miss Juliet. Here's the trip, Miss Dee Dee. You don't need mercy for what you did five years ago. You need mercy for what you did last week, or dare I say last night, or this morning. Somebody shout mercy. I need mercy. Yeah, yeah. So it's thin mercy. Here's the next one. Watch your mouth. Oh, God. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Choose to speak kindly of her. Make a decision to speak kindly of her. Watch your mouth. You may not have a lot to say, but make sure that what you do say is kind. Watch your mouth. Speak kindly of them, whether they deserve it or not. Hallelujah. Yeah. Watch your mouth mouth. Some of y'all, I I said it in a previous message, you got diarrhea of the mouth. You just constantly open your mouth and whatever come out, that's what come out. No, watch your mouth. Quit constantly speaking on what you don't like because you make it bigger than it needs to be. Are you listening? In fact, if you're in the middle, you start trying to remind them of what happened or you start speaking on all the negative, it's like you're scratching the scab off. You're taking it off. And God is saying, I'm trying to heal you. I'm trying to, I'm trying to restore you, but I can't restore you because you keep giving attention and heed to everything that's wrong. Are you listening? Look at somebody and say, watch your mouth. Here's the next one. This is difficult. Acceptance is closure. Some of you have spent the last seasons of your life waiting on an apology that may never come. Yeah. And in the absence of an apology, you have to move to acceptance. Yeah. Acceptance is the last stage of the grieving process. Acceptance. I don't understand it, but I accept it. I do have some questions, but I still accept it. Yes, I wish they would recognize what they did wrong, but I accept it. Acceptance is sometimes the only closure you need. Well, I just need them to call me and tell me why. Fine if they do, but if they don't, are you going to wait another 10 years and be bitter? Are you going to be frustrated another 20 years? Are you going to keep treating, mistreating your own kids because of what they did? Acceptance is closure. Yeah. I deserve to have some answers, but I may never get it. Acceptance is closure. Yeah. Sit in it. What is it, what doors do you keep open, hoping people will change? When God is saying, no, it's time for you to wash your face. In the Bible, washing your face wasn't just washing rouge or mascara or, or, or lashes off your face. <laughs> no, no, no. In the Bible, when you washed your face, it was the sign of the end of grieving. It, 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 it was a sign that I'm washing away all the pain, all the turmoil, all, all the disappointments and all the hiccups. I, I don't have the answers, but I can't. W- See, life is too short for me to stay mad. Life is too short for me to stay bitter. Life is too short for me to sit in the sit in the seat of the scornful. That's rich. Life is too short for me to sit in that seat. I, I, I only have about 80 or 90 years if, if that, right? And so why do I need to spend tremendous chunks of my life waiting on you to do what you know you owe me, but you won't say? And even if you say it, you don't mean it. <laughs> Acceptance is closure. You may never get a reason for why she did what she did or didn't do what she didn't, what she should have had, should have done. But acceptan- acceptance can be closure for you. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get my words together, mother. <laughs> Here's the next one. Love from afar, if necessary. Yeah, good. Y'all didn't hear me. Love from afar, if necessary. Yeah. <sighs> Unfortunately, you may never be able to have the relationship with your mother that you always imagined. Okay. Because, some, because sometimes getting too close to them compromises your peace and your own safety. And in this case, love them from a distance. 
if they're not willing to adjust, love them from a distance. It doesn't mean you can't call them. It doesn't mean you can't send nice messages to them. It doesn't mean you can't go and spend the holidays with them. It doesn't mean that you can't love on them when necessary or buy them gifts when necessary. It just means that I have a boundary of how much I can take from her. This is good. I have a boundary of how much I can take. There's only so much criticism that I'm willing to tolerate. There's only so much hatefulness that I'm willing to tolerate. There's only so much manipulation that I'm willing to take from you. And now I see, I see, I see your pattern now. And your pattern is starting to affect my kids. So just like you were critical to me, now you're super critical to them. And I can't let my kids live with that. Y'all ain't ready to talk. And so if that means that I got to separate myself from you, y'all ain't ready to talk. I'm not willing to let my kids be traumatized like you traumatized me. Holy Spirit, heal right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, heal right now. In Jesus' name. I'm not willing to let all of your dysfunction. It'd be different if you went to counseling. It'd be different if you accessed resources. It would be different if you showed in some kind of that you were trying to get yourself together. It would be different. Holy Spirit, move. It would be different. But you act like none of that happened. And I'm not willing to expose those that I'm accountable for to all of that and all of that foolishness. You abandoned me. You're not going to abandon my kids. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You dogged me out. You're not going to dog out my husband. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Heal. Set free. Deliver. Yeah. So love from a distance. It doesn't make you a bad daughter to love from a distance. Come on. Have the conversation. Don't just, don't just disappear and ghost your mama. Have the conversation. This is why. Do what she couldn't do for you. She may not like it, but at least she understands it. You got it? Yeah. Here's, here, here's the last one. Oh, God, too much happened in the room. Here, here's the last one. Celebrate the miracle. Glory to your high name. Celebrate the miracle. Based on who your mama was, you should be in therapy. You should be crazy. You should be out of your mind. You should be insecure. You should be just a basket case. You should be all kinds of things. You, you should be crazy, but it's a miracle you still stand it. It's a miracle you still, ha still have half your mind. It's a miracle that you can love your kids the way you do. It's a miracle that you have a whole marriage. It's a miracle that you're able to look yourself in the face and look yourself in the mirror and still smile at yourself. It's a miracle. Look at somebody and say, it's a miracle. Go on and release it, D.D. Yeah, it's a whole miracle that you're still standing and that you're not bitter and that you're not anxious and that you're not going crazy. It's a whole miracle. Look at somebody and say, I'm a miracle. Hallelujah. I grew up in toxicity but I'm a miracle. I grew up with a crackhead for a parent, but I'm a miracle. I grew up with an absentee parent, but I'm a miracle. I had all kind of craziness happening in my childhood home, but I am a miracle. I'm a miracle. If you know you're a miracle, whether it's because of your mama or because of, in spite of your daddy, just lift up your hands and give God praise all over the room and just begin to open up your mouth and thank God that for every mountain he brought you over and for every valley he saw you through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That your growth wasn't stunted. That God sustained you and kept you in spite of what you went through. Hallelujah. And that's my testimony today. And that's what I'm going to cling to today. I just want to give God praise for his keeping power. And if he never gives me a car, and if he never gives me a job, and if he never gives me a house on a hill, and if I never get name brand clothes, I just want to say thank you, Lord, 
for keeping me. And thank you, Lord, for sustaining me. And thank you, Lord, for helping me. And thank you, Lord, for healing me. And thank you, Lord, for infusing me with hope. Somebody shout, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to thank you that I am the miracle baby. Lord have mercy. I am the miracle baby. Because if the Lord, if the devil had ha had have had his way, you would have been aborted. You would have been left aside. You would have been destroyed. But thanks be unto God who causes you to triumph, who causes you to have victory. And yet and still, there are some mothers in the room who may not be the model mother, may not be the best mother. But you know without a shadow of a doubt that you are a miracle mother. Goodbye, y'all. Hallelujah. Because you took what you had and still managed to be able to get your baby through school. You took what you had and still managed to raise your family to the best of your ability. Look at somebody, mama, and say, I'm a miracle mother. Yes, I am. I am a miracle mother. Hallelujah. Hey, I was able to raise my babies with a piece of a job. I was able to raise my babies with no man in sight. I was able. I am a miracle mother. And all the miracle mothers in the room, praise God now. Praise them, praise them, praise them, praise them. Praise them, praise them, praise them. Praise them, praise them, praise them, praise Woo. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, Lord. Raised them on beans and weenies, but we made it. Raised them on Roman noodles, but we made it. Hallelujah. Raised them, hallelujah, on orange Roman noodles for chicken, pink Roman noodles for shrimp, red Roman noodles for beef. We, that's all we had, but we made it. Couldn't go to the finish line to get them shoes, but I went to, <laughs> I went to Payless and got Pro Wings. We made it. Some of y'all ain't ready. Y'all go to Walmart now. Go to Walmart. Hallelujah. I made it. I made it. And just take a look at my kids. And they don't look like what we've been through. And they don't look like what we had to endure. Hallelujah. Remembering those nights, Christians, when the, when the lights were off and you had to do their homework by candlelight. Remembering how you still made it. Still made it. And you did it so well, Brianna, that you were poor and your kids didn't know you were poor. Y'all ain't ready to talk. I didn't realize we were poor until I was a teenager in high school because they obscured it so well. Yeah, he kept you. We're standing all over the room. He kept you. He kept you. And so when you go and get that steak this, this afternoon... Before you take that first bite, Maria, just say, Lord, I thank you for the miracle. Both the miracle in me and the miracle in my kids. I thank you for the miracle. Hallelujah. Jeffrey, before you eat that piece of chicken, you, you better just take a moment and say, Lord, I thank you for the miracle. Yeah. Q, before you give up, you better thank him. Glory, I thank you, God, that your hand has been on her life, her whole life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for it. Hallelujah, I thank you for it. That you're not done. Thank you for the miracle. Thank you for the miracle. If this message was a blessing for you, somebody celebrate all over the room. And thank God, it was different, but it was good. Hallelujah, it was challenging, but it was necessary. Those that know, know. And if you know that God is a keeper, just open up your mouth and begin to worship him. Begin to worship him. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. 
I thank you for your keeping power. I thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> because no matter how bad that was, it produced a man of God. It produced a preacher of the gospel. It produced something greater than even her. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, now be a healer all over this room. You are Jehovah Rapha. We look good in this room today, but we got some internal wounds. We got some internal baggage. Restore right now. Hallelujah. Restore. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hold us close, God. Hold us close. Yes, Lord. Hmm. Hallelujah. This is what I see. First, I see a ground filled or a floor filled with eggshells. Because for significant periods of your life, you haven't been living in peace. You've been living, walking on eggshells. And the eggshells that you've been walking on is refusing to say what needs to be said because Maria, out of fear of what traumatized you back then, you're scared you're going to traumatize those that you're caring for now. Does that make sense? So you find yourself walking on eggshells. Some of you ladies are scared to discipline because you're scared it's gonna veer off into the ugliness that you experience. You're scared to set order because you're scared that it's going to veer off into what the trauma that you experience. But just like Ernest, I see the eggshells. I also see God with a broom and a dustpan sweeping up eggshells because now you're going to finally have peace and now you're going to finally rest in God and now you're finally going to here it is DD now you're going to finally have confidence and, and now you're going to have assurance yeah 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 you, you, you and even if you make a mistake God is going to cover you and God is going to sustain you and God is going to keep you hallelujah you're not going to repeat in fact the cycle ends with you. Glory to his high name. The, the generational curse, the generational cycle ends. The pattern ends with you. It ends with you. No more eggshells. No more eggshells. No more eggshells. Hallelujah. You are not your mother. You, you are not. You are not your mother. No more. No more. No more eggshells. You are not what they did. No more. No more. No more eggshells. God, I thank you for your word. 
I thank you for the work that you're working in this room. I thank you for it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Mother Osirene, come here right quick. Hallelujah. No more in Jesus' name. No more in Jesus' name. Hug, hug your son, son-in-law. Hug, hug, hug him. Just hug him tight. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. May this hug be healing for you in Jesus' name. May it be healing for you right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Receive all of it. Receive all of it. 